Welcome to episode 6 of the Toilet's Rampart Guide. This is the last episode of the series. The main focus of today's episode will be showcasing how a rampart can turn into a movement legend by using super gliding and tap strafing. I use these movements in essentially every single fight, and it is also what makes me very different from most other Rampart mains. Let's begin. First of all, I would like to show you my key bindings regarding movement. So here it is. This is very important for you because you will be able to understand my movement from looking at my keyboard layout. I know this is a very weird setup, but uh, I did this for a reason. First, I used uh, RDFG instead of WASD. This is to uh, allow more keys on my left side so that uh, my pinky can actually uh, be more useful than traditional WASD position. And second, I have a scroll wheel forward for move forward, which is very common for uh, carrying out tap strafing. And uh, the thing is, I also have a scroll wheel downwards for moving backwards. This is also for uh, tap straightening, but uh, to go in backwards, which will be used very frequently later in this video. Next, I have S bind to sprint and toggle zoom, but uh, I already have auto sprint on, so this is only for toggle zoom. And lastly, I have B bind to crouch and space bind to jump. I did this so that it is easier to super glide because to super glide you need to press both jump and crouch inside a very very narrow tight window. So being able to press both keys with my thumb will make the timing a lot closer and making my super gliding a lot more consistent. Let's begin by practicing super gliding on Rampart's walls. If you don't know what super gliding is, you can look it up on YouTube. So we will skip those parts and jump right into practicing it with ramparts. It is very simple to practice. First, put down a wall, and then get yourself a pistol. Hold ADS, walk up to your wall, and climb it. You can see your ADS gets cancelled for a moment because you are climbing the wall. What you need to do is to remember the timing when the pistol starts zooming back in. That is the moment you hit the super glide. Now let's try. And that was a successful super glide. You will be about 8 to 9 meters away from your cover. The practice itself is a fairly simple process. However, it can be time consuming and frustrating. When I first started, I couldn't even hit a super glide in like 10 minutes or 20 minutes. But once you get the timing down, you will realize that it is not that hard. Once you are familiar with the timing, you can increase the difficulty by putting away your gun. You cannot rely on the animation anymore, and instead, you will have to rely on your vision and your muscle memory. And again, you need to try over and over and over to get consistent. Like, see, even I fail from time to time, so it is totally normal to fail when you are learning. Once you are good with the basic forward superglide, it is time to add variation. Did you know you can superglide in 7 directions on mouse and keyboard? First, we have the basic forward superglide, and then 
we can also super glide 45 degrees sideways. So it is this side and this side. And then we can even super glide 90 degrees to the sideways. So this side and this side. And lastly, you can super glide backwards 45 degrees. So it is this side and this side. The further you are away from the forward direction, the harder it will become to do those inputs. The 45 degree is relatively easy to do. You just need to hold down a sideways key while you are climbing and hitting the super glide. What? The 90 degree is where things start to get hard. First, you need to hold sideways while you are climbing the wall. And then, at the very last moment, let go of your forward key and hit the super glide. And lastly, we have the 45 degrees backward super glide. I just discovered this recently and I am still practicing it. The 45 degrees backwards is quite similar to the 90 degrees sideways, except you need to do one more input. That is, when you arrive at the top of your climb, instead of letting go of forward key, you need to let go forward key, plus do a backward input with your scroll wheel, like this. So, combining everything, the 45 backwards will look something like this. And lastly, you can do something that is very similar to a backwards super glide. To do that, you need to do a 45 degrees super glide backwards. And then, once you start flying, you let go of your sideways key and keep inputting backwards with your scroll wheel. This is essentially a tap strafe to your back while you are doing a backwards 45 degrees. So you will result in a line that is somewhat like this. So this is when you start the 45 degree and then you let go of the sideways key and keep scrolling backward. So uh, you will make a turn here, backwards, like this. And just like that, there we go. That is uh, probably the co closest thing I can do to a backwards super glide. Uh, I know uh, it is possible to super glide backwards if you are a Octane on controller. I have seen a clip of that somewhere before. But uh, since I don't play Octane or I don't play controller, I am not sure how that works. Uh, if you know more on backwards super gliding, please let me know because I would really love to uh, do a backwards super glide with Rampart on mouse and keyboard. Now we are done with super gliding. Let's put tap strafing inside and see what we can do with it. Starting from this second, I will assume you know what is tap strafing and how to tap strafe. If you don't, you can feel free to look it up on YouTube and come back later. And now, I am going to share my favorite move sets that I will use in fights. The first move is called U-Turn, because it looks like this. Again. First, I super glide with my forward and leftward key. And then I let go my forward key and start scrolling up to do a tap strafe. While I am doing this, I am also starting to move my mouse from left to right to turn my head. And then while I am turning my head, I let go of my leftward key. Now my direction of moving is slightly changed. 
and then I, as my head turned more, I start to input the right word key, and now my uh, direction of moving is 180 degrees reversed. I like to use this move when enemies are starting to go behind my wall, say when they are somewhere around here, standing here. This is a very effective trick because it is a double surprise to your enemies. The first surprise is that uh, you will never expect a rampart to go to the orange side of her wall. And the second surprise is the tap strafe. The 180 tap strafe makes them very hard to track you during the process. And what I like to do is to first confuse them. And then while they are still looking for me, or doing micro adjustments with their aim, uh, I will start shooting at them and hopefully I can uh, kill them because of their confusion. my second combo, the satellite. Here is how I did it. First, I started to super glide while pressing left and forward. And then, when I'm midair, I started to let go of the forward key and keep inputting forward with my scroll wheel. This is essentially a tap strafe. However, Unlike regular tap strafe, where you uh, press left and turn left, or press right and turn right, I turned in a different direction. I pressed left and turned right. This resulted in a circular path where I am kind of looking at the inside of the circle. And again, this is also an effective trick because uh, it messes up your opponent's aim. For mouse and keyboard players, they are forced to do a 180 turn, and so their mouse usually move out of their comfort aiming zone, and they are forced to either reset their mouse, or uh, continue aiming in a uh, less familiar zone. And the result is uh, their aim turns worse, and uh, I will have a higher chance of winning. And for controller players, uh, they are not very good at quick and large turns. Like this quick 180 turn uh, is very unfriendly for controllers. So again, I can throw them off guard and hopefully kill them while they are still uh, readjusting their aim. This is my third trick. I call it the L strafe because I draw a letter L while I'm midair. It can be a forward L or a backward L. I did this by first super gliding sideways and then I start using my scroll wheel. I scroll up or scroll down depending on whether I want to do a forward L or a backward L. And lastly, I let go of my sideways key so that I go straight forward or straight backward without any sideways movement. The forward L is good for surprise attack because you can first confuse your enemy by the sideways super glide and then you shorten the distance between you and them to finish them off. The backwards L strafe is good for retreating or repositioning. This is because you can move backwards quickly while you can still look at what is happening in front of you.
This is the fourth move. I call it the zigzag. First, I super glide 90 degrees to the left, and then I start scroll wheeling backwards. After that, I let go of the leftward key. And then, after a little bit of scrolling, I start to input the rightward key. And now, my direction of moving has changed by 135 degrees. And with a little help of the uh, forward scroll wheel, I can do a almost 180 degree turn from left to right while my face is facing forward the whole time. I like to use this trick on enemies that is right in front of me, like the dummy here, for several reasons. Number one is that I can waste their bullets because I am almost impossible to track and uh, a lot of enemies will just try to track me but they won't realize that uh, they are wasting their own bullets and they won't have enough bullets to shoot me when I am actually uh, possible to track. The second reason is that I can act as a bait to uh, trick them into shooting me instead of shooting my wall. Then, uh, after the strafe is complete, I can simply return to my barely damaged wall and continue using it. My last movement trick is also the most basic, the most boring movement trick in this episode. That is, a simple, straightforward super glide. Ow. What? Alright, there we go, first try. Despite being boring and simple, this is probably the most effective trick for a surprise attack because number one, it is silent. You just jump off your cover and you will make no footstep. Uh, I mean, this is supposed to be a huge advantage, but uh, there is no audio in Apex anyways. So uh, yeah, let's hope Apex fix their audios. But anyways, moving on. The second advantage is that this trick is incredibly fast. Look at this. So, what's happening here is first you do some decent damage, and then your enemy starts to go back to cover and heal. Meanwhile, when you see the damage pop up, you put away your weapon to increase your speed and range of super gliding and then you super glide immediately and it takes like only a second to get from there to here and start attacking again this is very effective for surprise attack it is also a good way to surprise others with sheila Apart from super gliding and tap strafing, Rampart also has some special movement interactions with her walls. You can sort of do punch boosting with her wall. First you walk up to her wall, and then punch it. After that, jump and hold crouch, and you will be able to slide backwards. However, uh, I don't find this very useful because you will have to uh, put away your weapon for the melee attack. Another way of doing so is to walk at an angle towards your wall and then punch 
and then let go of your forward key and hold crouch. It takes some space for preparation and you need to do melee which uh, again you need to put your weapon away to do that. So uh, again there is such a trick here but not very effective, not recommended. You can also cancel fall stun with Rampart's wall. Just put a wall when you are about to hit the ground and you will be bounced off uh, horizontally at a high speed. However, the timing needs to be very precise and again I don't really find a practical use of this trick. The combination of super gliding and tap strafing is almost unlimited. Until this day, I am still exploring the different combinations and trying to find more combos that are useful in an actual fight. I will make an updated video if I actually manage to find some new meaningful movements, but before that, that would be the end of episode 6 of the Toilet Rampart Guide. And this is also the end of the Toilet Rampart Guide. As always, leave your questions in the comments section and I will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!